Green Tree Productions is proud to present Duncanville Weekly News. It's the good news just for the city of champions, Duncanville, Texas. And now, here's your host, John Thompson. Hello world, America, Texas, and Duncanville, and welcome to this edition of Duncanville Weekly News. For the last couple of weeks of March 2015, glad you're logged in and watching. Well, this is going to be kind of a, a different show because we've got about four or five things that all last about three or four minutes, primarily because of the weather. The Pantherettes had their banquet a couple of days ago. We interviewed the junior varsity coach at the Pantherette basketball program, Legina Howard. Also, the baseball team got in one game. But first, let's give you a soccer update as their season is now over and they're heading to the playoffs. The boys soccer team won their final game of the season by a score of 14 to nothing over DeSoto. They finished third place in the district with a season record of 12-6-3. Their district record is 7-4-1. They will play a bi-district game versus Colleyville Heritage, who was the second place finisher in District 7-6A at a time and place uh, yet to be announced. The winner of that bi-district game will then move on to the area round, which is later in that week. Good luck, Panthers. Hello, this is Duncan Bell Optical. If someone in your family has an active lifestyle, they may benefit from polycarb lenses in their eyeglasses. You won't see double in polycarb lenses from Duncanville Optical. Polycarb lenses are thinner, lighter weight, and 10 times stronger than standard plastic lenses. When you need eyeglasses, please remember Duncanville Optical, 533 West Wheatland Road in Duncanville. Call today to find out about our polycarb lenses, 972-298-5800. The girls' soccer team finished pretty strongly, winning their last couple of games. They finished the regular season with a record of 8-8-2 eight, eight, and two, and were 6-5-1 and one in district play, which is a solid third-place finish. They will now move on to the state playoffs and play the second-place finisher in District 7-6A, which is South Lake Carroll. The time and place of that game has not been announced yet, but the winner will move on to play the area round later in that week. Good luck, Panthers. Well, the Wednesday after spring break, the Pantherettes held their annual banquet at the Sandra Meadows Arena, and here's what happened. The Pantherettes held their banquet again this year in the Sandra Meadows Arena, which I've now been assured that the sound system is going to get fixed before the next season. But Coach Kathy Self Morgan was again the MC, and she did a great job. Welcome everybody, and introduced the school board members that were in attendance and other special guests. Then she introduced Coach Robert Irwin and the freshman blue team that was 12 and 5 on the season. There they are. Then red team freshman coach Amy Pack followed, introducing her team. They went 20 and 5 on the season. Both the blue and the red teams were district runners up. Then junior varsity coach Legina Howard had the floor. Her team went 27 and 0. 
a perfect record, her first perfect record since she played here 10, 15 years ago. And they were introduced. They were the junior varsity district champions, of course, with the same record as the Pantherettes, 12 and 0. Alicia Walker, longtime assistant, was there to the pleasure of everyone after she had given birth to twins recently. Then Coach Cassius F. Morgan recapped this past season as they were 30 and 6 and area finalists in the shortest stint, though, in the state playoffs in her 15 years at Duncanville. Academic all districts and all states dominated this team as 13 of the 15 varsity members were in that echelon. She introduced all the team members and presented them their outside awards. Then she announced the individual team awards voted on by the players, except the whatever it takes award, and that's done by the coaches. And they went to Desmond Taylor and Madison Townley. It was a tie. The Fighting Heart Award went to Jasmine Taylor also. The Andrew Heart Award goes to that person that won the award. The most valuable defensive award went to Sophomore Tay Davis. The most valuable offensive player was a freshman. Zay Green. The most valuable Pantherette was also a tie this year. Junior Sierra Johnson and Madison Townley shared that honor. As is the tradition, the seniors were given a chance to say a few words. And they did. And that was followed by the students singing the school alma mater. Except for a couple of usual things, it was another great Pantherette banquet. In the Pantherette Banquet, of course, you saw Legina Howard, the junior varsity coach, as she did her bit. We had an opportunity to visit with her last week, and here's the interview. We are visiting with Legina Howard, a 2004 graduate of Duncanville High School, and she's also the junior varsity coach now at Duncanville High School. Let's see some of her plays from 11 years ago. So, Legina, tell us what you've done in the last 10, 11 years after you left Duncanville High School. Well, over the last four years, I've been coaching here in the Duncanville District. I've been a coach at Reed Middle School for the last three and then coach brought me up this year. Previously before that, I was a coach at the University of Louisiana Monroe and also a player at the University of Louisiana Monroe. I've really enjoyed coming back home and giving back to this community. Well, Legina, uh, sounds like you've had a lot of fun so far. Tell us uh, how your uh, JV team did this year. Well, we had an undefeated season this year. Uh, won two first place trophies, one in the Arlington Seguin Tournament, the other in the Legacy Tournament. Uh, came out and actually got to play in the Sandra Meadows Tournament, got one victory out of that, playing against a varsity team. 
went undefeated in district. The girls were tenacious on defense and, and just all over every place and hustled and played with a lot of heart. And so we came out undefeated. Well, Regina, I had an opportunity to see you play a couple of times and uh, you've got some girls that are coming. Yes. Tell us about some of your players on the uh, junior varsity team this year. Well, let's have a look. Here we have Jayla Johnson. She's one of our sophomore post players, real agile, quick on defense, great hands, good passing, great rebounder, just all over the place. Then you have uh, Star Jacob. She's a freshman who's brought a lot to our team this year. Uh, she finishes well on the inside, great on defense, get a lot of deflections. We have one of our juniors, Kiara Black, uh, real long, gets, uh, gets in the passing lanes, finishes well under the basket. Then right behind her, we have our other junior, Tamika Charles, who's very strong, gets in the pass lanes on defense, gets in your pants, gets those five-second calls. After that, you have Lamoya Lott. She's a freshman, uh, very strong finisher right and left hand, very good on defense, one of my best perimeter shooters. After that, another freshman, Anaya Thomas. Anaya was one of my players who was a swinger this year. She played half season with me, half on varsity. Uh, very great ball handler. We have Nina Alvarez, I call her my hot tamale. She's quick on defense, great driving to the basket, very good finding an open man. After that you have Angel Flowers, who brings that three point, three point shot and also just giving 110% every day in everything that she does. After that you have Cameron Griffin, whose favorite thing to do is play defense, and which is what I love about her. She'll guard any man on the floor at any time. Then you have Tiara Franklin, who just brings that inside-outside game. She's a sophomore as well. Um, has that great stroke on the outside and, and guards usually the best player every night. Usually in Duncanville, the, the junior varsity coach has a little problem because they've got kids going up and down and up and down. Uh, but you've got some that probably could have played either place, as, as you mentioned. It is great to have you back. To, uh, to Duncanville, and we're looking forward to uh, more good seasons like this from, uh, from you. Is this your first undefeated season in the world? Oh, yes, it is, <laughs> besides the one that I played in. Ah, <laughs> that's a pretty good base. Yes, it was. Again, thanks for being with us, and uh, best of luck. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Okay. Jane's Memorial Chapel is the only family-owned funeral home in Duncanville and is proud to offer caring and dedicated services from familiar friends. Rick James and his family, the owners of James Memorial Chapel and Funeral Home, have served Duncanville area families in their time of loss since 1998. A beautiful and spacious chapel is offered and James serves all cemeteries. When it comes to finding people you can trust in a time of need, you can turn to James Memorial Chapel. No one else knows families better. 811 South Cockrell Hill in Duncanville. It's springtime in Texas and that means Duncanville Panther Baseball right here on Duncanville Weekly News and the Panther Dugout Show. The Panther Dugout Show brings us updates and highlights of the past few games and a peek ahead to the Panthers next games. The Panther Dugout Show is brought to us by James Memorial Chapel, the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James, by the Wolverton Company, serving the heating and cooling needs of the Duncanville area for longer than anybody can remember, Jim McDonald State Farm Insurance Agency, right here on Main Street. Remember, State Farm and Jim are there. By Chubby's Family Restaurant on Cockrell Hill, for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And there's a reason why they do a lot of catering. Leon Miller Commercial Properties, Need some commercial space? Call Leon at 972-709-7181. Buy Roma's Italian Bistro at 100 South Main. Call 972-298-5900 for free delivery or dine-in. Entries are prepared freshly cooked for every order. Buy Glow Family Dental, General and Cosmetic Dentistry. Your smile is their top priority. They are here at 427 West Wheatland or call 972-298-2027, Glow Family Dental. And by Ambit Energy. You have power options, call me at 214-918-9981. You'll be glad you did. 
And now with the Panther Dugout Show, here's John with all the highlights. Hello, Duncanville baseball fans, and welcome back to the Panther Dugout. Well, uh, the weather has kind of uh, messed up uh, a lot of things, including the Panther baseball schedule. We've only got one game in this past couple of weeks, and here are the highlights. Tuesday evening, with, of course, a threat of rain, the Panthers played the Warriors over at South Grand Prairie, and a great opportunity to show the team members during the pregame activities as the South Grand Prairie PA announcer announced all the starting and reserves and now, for the Panthers North and took about 15 minutes to do so. Right, However, uh, after the game did get started with two outs in the first, there's Coach Cliff. Blake reaches on an infield hit. But he was left stranded. Freshman Jorge Trevino was on the bump for the Panthers. In the second with no score and one out, Alex Sanchez gets a nice hit to center. Then David Crone hits a shot on one hop to the Warrior pitcher, but he made a bad throw to second, and everybody is safe. The next batter, Burt Guerrero, grounds to short. But the shortstop throw is missed by the first baseman, and it plates Alec. Still, just one out and runners on second and third with Andrew Budzinski. And somebody missed a signal or the pitch or both as what appeared to be a suicide squeeze was just that, suicide, as the pinch runner Quincy is out and leaving a runner stranded. It's still one to nothing Panthers after one and a half innings. We move to the Panther fourth with one out and now trailing three to one, and Alec draws a walk. Then David places a sharp single to left, but a double play ended the rally, and it's three to one. Warriors after three and a half. South Grand Prairie got three more in the fifth, and that made it six to one, and that was just about it in this game, except for a play that uh, everybody learned something. Uh, Raul struck out, but the catcher didn't catch the ball. He didn't run to first. The catcher throws the ball, but the umpire catches it, pitches it over to the first baseman, uh, who threw it to the pitcher. Uh, meanwhile, Raul is on, on first base, and no umpire ever called him out. They knew they were wrong, but they made it up on the next play where Carlton is tagged out going to first, but as you can see, even before the ball got there, the umpire was calling him safe. That was it. Final, South Grand Prairie 6 and the Panthers 1 in their second district game. Each show we have a play of the week. And at South Grand Prairie, it happened in the sixth inning. When Raul strikes out, the catcher doesn't catch the ball. He throws it. The umpire catches it and then throws it to the first baseman who throws it to the pitcher. And Scott takes a little while to explain that somebody needs to call a player out if he's really out. And you can tell the umpires were listening, and they knew he was right because on the next play, Carlton grounds to short. The throw is inside. He's tagged out at first, but and that's why it's the play of the week. The play of the week is brought to us by the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James. For all your investment needs, call John or Don at 972-780-0533 or come by 222 East Wheatland, right here in Duncanville. It's the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James. Well, again, there's only been one, maybe two district games played, so showing you a district standings at this point would be a little premature. But 
let's take a look at who the Panthers have upcoming scheduled weather permitting. You can tell we've had a little weather problem by the upcoming schedule as uh, a game from last week is scheduled for this week, and that's Cedar Hill Monday night here at uh, Panther Field. On Tuesday, the Panthers travel down to Middle Ophium. On Friday, a non-district game with Mansfield Summit here. And on Saturday at noon, a, another non-district game with Fort Worth Southwest. Then Tuesday, district play resumes as the Panthers host Grand Prairie. And then on Friday, in a game originally scheduled for Thursday, if there hadn't been any rainouts for schools, the Panthers will play at DeSoto. We'll be back on April the 7th with highlights of those games, along with highlights from the Panther basketball banquet and an interview with Corey Johnson, their junior varsity coach. As we close, let's see more scenes from the Pantherette banquet, and we'll see you April the 7th. Thank you. 